Hello, I'm Joseph. I want to talk about Zig on Windows because this is an absolute shitstorm, and it has nothing to do with Zig. I'm, I'm not these videos I'm making. I'm not trying to like crap on Zig. This is more of a Windows specific thing. And if you're doing any other language, uh, you'll be running into this if it does not have C++ support. Um, and Zig does not have C++ interop support. I don't think it will ever have that. Um, and that, but that's not the important part. Uh, I came from, um, you know, Swift and, and Rust as well. And Swift does actually have C++ support. I think the story that I'm trying to do for PHP with Zig um, is probably better with Swift, to be honest, because it does have that C++ support. Everything I know now working with Zig, I could probably pull back into Swift and make a better solution around that. But uh, I, I just need to kind of talk about this. So I want to talk about CABIs. That's a critical point. Um, the, whether or not you need Visual Studio 2022, 2020, or 2019, um, the bugging, and then libraries as well. So first, actually, let's go over to the simpler part, libraries. Zigistry is what I use to try to find this stuff. Uh, I'm making a TUI right now. I was looking to see the TUI said it works on Windows, but then I look at what it does specifically for Windows, getting the Windows terminal size. It doesn't. The reason why it does it is it needs to hook into the Windows API calls for that, which then it needs to hook at MSVC, which then gets into all this other stuff uh, that I need to kind of talk about as well. Uh, but yeah, so there's some TUI stuff, terminal UIs. For GUI, it is so far in few between. We have things like Kappa, um, which if you use the GK, GTK backend, you're okay. But if you use the um, the mock renderer, which is also another Zig specific thing with, for building out like game engines, um, you have like a button, a label, and, and, and um, a window you can use cross platform. So Kappa is probably not the thing you want to go for. Your next option is QML. Uh, QML is basically QT, but it's a specific language design around for making GUI. So you don't actually use much of Zig at all other than to talk to the bridging layer to that. Uh, these, we also have Win32 bindings. So you can just call into the Windows stuff. So you would do native Windows UI in Zig itself. Um, that's about it that I know for, for that. There's stuff for like trying to get GTK and some other stuff like that. Uh, but it's it's really rough. And a lot of this has to do with the chasm that Microsoft has created with the Microsoft C compiler, which effectively is deprecated. It's legacy at this point. It has um, sporadic C99 support, um, which Zig tries to fix. I don't know if it's Zig or if it's just Clang in general that's doing these fixes. Um, but yeah, it, it's just like a, just a mess of an issue. And it comes down to the CABI. Okay. With that, let's talk about debugging. I think debugging is also another big point. Um, you can debug with like Visual Studio and NeoVim on Windows um, using LLDB. Uh, I need to go ahead and open up. Actually, I need to quit all here. Uh, open up the Visual Studio launch thing here. Yes, sure. Mac OS, you are lovely. Thank you. Um, you have the ch choice between LLDB, which is the, the default you would use for like Mac OS and Linux, or CPVS debugger. Um, which requires Microsoft Visual Studio. If you're on Windows, and specifically x86 64-bit, basically any AMD Intel processor, you can still use LLODB, but you need to pass in the flag of uh, use native PDB reader um, to make this work. And you would pass it in as an environmental, or you can go set your Windows environmental with this as well. And it should technically work if it picks it up in your terminal that you'll be running NeoVim in. Um, you can also try to use the uh, M64 tool chain as well to do some of this stuff. But the reality is you can just use the code LLDB from Visual Studio. Set this up as a, a build thing here, and you're, you're pretty much set. Testing is another way. You can use um, at breakpoint in, in Zig to force uh, the LLDB to, to, to stop if you're just using it raw command line and you're not using some GUI um, text editor with that. Uh, CCD, uh, the CCVS, if you're on Windows on ARM, Windows 60 or like ARM 64, you cannot use LLDB. Currently is unsupported. It has nothing to do with Zig. It's, uh, it's just specific to that. And yeah, that means you need Visual Studio 2022 or 2019 to, in order to, to debug your application on ARM 64 for Windows. Uh, this is a little bit of a tidbit. Hopefully that makes it very clear. Next point I want to move into is the um, the kind of C interop for Windows. And this is, uh, unfortunately, I just, I got to go into the CABI now. Um, CABI is fractured. 
it is it's fractured. Uh, there are multiple ABIs you would target. For Windows specifically, we have GNU and we have MSVC. If you need to pull into any of the Windows specific stuff, so this project I'm showing here hooks into the native Windows encryption stuff that libssh2 needs to do something as basic as an RSA certificate. Um, that doesn't even have support for ED25519, which is the more common one used today in certificates. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to digress a little bit there. I need to pull Windows native ST, uh, APIs, um, and they're the GNU variant can do some of this stuff, but it's not full featured. And so that's why you would target MSVC instead. But um, let me go ahead and show you the build stuff around this. So if I go ahead and I open up, um, yeah, open up my make file. No, no, not my make file, my, my readme. My readme? No, my app build. So let's go here first. When I start with a Zig project and I'm doing cross-platform testing or something like that, I don't go into the Zig build API. While it is a, a solution on its own, I believe the CLI is going to be your first bet because you can just do dash dash help and get every flipping flag right there in your eye sockets uh, given to you. With this, um, you just set up the flags like you would do with GCC or, or Clang on these other systems. You can wrap this into a CMake if you want to, if you really don't want to Zig build API. And uh, yeah, I'm targeting specific Windows encryption libraries or DLLs, but these are libs. You don't, you don't pass in the DLLs into this command. Um, and then the Windows specific uh, kit for the dot libs to link the symbols with the linker and the visual studio um, C header files that you need to target. This gets into the, the crap tastic stuff uh, about the C compiler, but I also still need to show the zig build because once I get this all ratified, I'm happy with it seems to be building out correctly. I will then build out a zig build. So we have build dot zig. Oh my goodness. Yes. This is what I get for downloading it just from the internet. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, build.zig. And then I have flags. So these flags, like the asking for Windows SDK path when asking for the Visual Studio path, means that I can, on my Mac OS machine, cross-compile to a Windows machine or Windows builds .exe and go use these on my from my Mac machine onto my Windows machine. I, but I, I need these on my machine. I've, I've needed to download 80 gigabytes of Visual Studio 2022 uh, to make this all the work. Um, but I have, I can now use Zig to kind of interop between the debug and release and on ARM versus not on ARM. So right here I have libssh2, which I've compiled outside of Zig. I can technically try to compile libssh2 with the Zig toolchain. I don't want to do that right now. And so I just use the CMake versions of that uh, with the Microsoft toolchains uh, for those as well. And I have X, uh, 64 bit and ARM 64 for debug and release static libraries that I will statically link into my executable for a single, um, run executable without any need for DLLs with that. Uh, with that, I also have, you know, I set up the paths like I showed with the there, but I also then, um, put in my encryption stuff and debug versions of the visual C runtime and, uh, the universal C runtime. But if it's on like, uh, an arm you can't link uh the ms the microsoft c runtime you just depend on these two runtimes in themselves that's it and you don't link glibc if you're targeting msvc it causes all these other issues with that um and then for uh the the c interop stuff this is this this is where it just falls apart and again this is not a zig related issue uh let me just open up my main for this one project I, I need to include windows.h prop to be able to have libssh2 actually get called on correctly, but it's only because I need this specific macro here. I can't include it because um, there's all this crap that Zig does in between trying to manage all this. There's like a runtime RT or something like this that Zig has for its own. And it tries to mitigate a lot of these issues that you can be running to with windows, including header files that effectively the C compiler for Microsoft is uh is legacy is deprecated is not being not used anymore and like i'm going to jump over to my php thing here where it it like uh the the c compiler for for microsoft does not have max align t i need this uh it doesn't have it and so uh zig ships with this as an interop uh so if you are writing if you're using a c library that needs this or maybe zig needs this um it doesn't have to swap over to the c plus plus compiler 
Because the second you do that, say goodbye to the library that you want to do, unless you can do everything I'm, I talked about in my C translate video that I went to like a really bad spot in Zig right now, but effectively you don't have support for C++ um, in Zig. So you can't, the reason why I'm saying like you can't use libraries that want to use C is that the C compiler for Microsoft is a broken version of C99. You don't have C11, you don't have C23. If you want those features, you need to swap over the C++ compiler. If you're going to do that, then you need to start to introduce all these macros to interrupt between C and C++ compilers, things like DLL export and stuff like that, um, just so you can have access to like max align T. You, you would need to swap over the C++ compiler. You want access to C11, C23, these safer C functions you can call so you can provide links to your strings so you don't have things like buffer overflow. Like, uh, I don't have it up right now, but like PHP's dot releases are like just riddled with leaks and overflows, uh, CVAs for security issues because of these overflows. Um, it would be nice to have a new version of C available for Windows. You just can't do that with the MSVC because they don't do two craps about it. It is as it is right now. It'll stay like that for maintenance, but every new feature they are introducing will only be with the C++ compiler. If you have a problem with that, go use C Sharp or something like that because uh, that'll have better support. But um, I'm going to digress a little bit here. I don't think it's much else for me to harp on the intricacies of Microsoft's uh, C compiler and what Zig or Clang or LLVM, I'm not sure what the call this does, is trying to mitigate some of this stuff. Um, the last thing I will say is I was cross compiling with 0.13 and I had all these bugs. I moved over to the .14, that's two out in the next couple of weeks, um, and it fixed all the issues I was having for duplicate symbols. So if you're running across the same thing, you're trying to do cross compiling, um, you know, you can do that. I will have, um, not my Zig PHP project out soon, but the SFTP version. So if you want to look into how I did cross compiling the specific folders, you would need to copy and all this other stuff. I'll have it out in a couple of weeks. Um, this was a project I wanted to pull back on it and do a little bit more because I was just getting really burnt out with everything I'm trying to do just to get PHP, uh, to work across Windows, Linux, and Mac in using Zig to make that full end end. Other, other person's already done this, by the way, but they use C anyways because of the macro hell that PHP does. Like, just generates a function. It, you call a macro to generate a function because that's obviously what the macro system is kind of, you know, you can do with. It's a simple string replace type of thing, but uh, you need to write all this stuff yourself. Uh, I need to write this stuff all myself, and I've, I've been doing that. Um, it's just for Windows specifically, PHP requires the C++ compiler. Um, and yeah, so I can't do that. And I've, I've, I'm have i trying to sidestep that part uh, because there's all these issues with C Translate. Like I said, that wasn't a, another video. Anyways, take care. Hopefully that help, helps you kind of, you know, get your teeth into the Windows development stuff without necessarily doing it yourself. And I'll, I'll try, like I said, I'll try my best to get a cross compile version of the other the sftp sync thing that I, I was showing for some of the source code um i have another one for the tui but that's not going to be ready for a little bit longer either uh for cross uh, platform support and specifically working on windows